is up, brawlers, bladers, and fellow awesome nerds. It is I, Baku Dad, one half of the Baku Boys. And if this is your first time to the channel, please hit that like and subscribe button. Also, drop a comment so you can help keep our channel growing as we do try and release weekly Bakugan, Beyblade, and other awesome nerdy content every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into what I've got in store for you guys for this video. So, today is Saturday, August 7th, and if you guys remember what I said from yesterday's Friday Night Fights video, I am going to be showcasing off the Zombie World Order cards that you have seen Baku Kid and I use for our two Zombie World Order uh, TCG episodes. And like I said, the these are just two demo decks, uh, two small demo decks. Uh, they're 25 small 25 card decks. Um, a normal Zombie World Order deck is actually a 50 card deck from what I read in the rule book. But like I said, these are just half half decks for uh, for demoing purposes. But uh, all the cards are the exact same for both. So I don't have to show off both half decks. I only just need to showcase off one half deck. And these are the really cool sleeves that Baku Kid and I are using for these two half decks. We, we really like the uh, nice quality of these, but we also like the, the art on them as well. But um, also, Baku Kid and I, we've got a, yeah, uh, we do have a box of Zombie World Order cards coming in soon. And if you remember, I did say something about that in yesterday's Friday Night Fights video. So that is going to be awesome when it finally gets here. But I'm not going to waste that much more time. We're going to cut straight to the table where we will check out all these awesome Zombie World Order cards. Catch you guys in just a moment. All right, guys, here we are back at the table, ready to go ahead and check out all these awesome Zombie World Order cards that Baku Kid and I have already played with. So, <clears throat> I already went ahead and sorted all these cards out so it was easier for me to kind of showcase everything. So we'll go through all the, uh, the green, the undead cards. So, starting off, we've got a Karate Master. It costs three energy or three magic to bring him out. And then you flip over one of your magic cards to bring him from the splattered zone to the undead zone. His attack power is eight and his critical damage that he deals to the player is two damage to the player. Because if you remember, both players start off with 10 life points and the first player to get, you know, the other eliminated wins. So two copies of the Karate Master and he actually has no special ability except just just this flavor text. Next, we have two copies of the Samurai General. He costs two magic to play. Uh, flip over one magic card, flip over one face up magic card face down to revive him from the splattered zone to the undead zone. He has two attack power and one critical damage. And then he also has this amplify ability when this zombie inflicts damage to your opponent's life, flip over the same number of your face down magic. So whenever he actually does damage to your opponent's life points, you can actually flip over the same number of face down magic cards to, to face up. So he can only, you can only uh, do one per, per samurai general, but that's good because you need the, you need the face up magic cards to flip over to, to help revive your zombies. Uh, and then he also has a permanent ability. If you control three zombies or more, this zombie gains plus five attack power. So if you have three or more zombies, he goes from a two to a seven attack power. <coughs> Next, we have two copies of the legendary Yokozuna. Two magic to play him. Flip over one magic card to revive. He's got six power and one critical damage, no special abilities. Next we have one copy of the Omikoshi. 
five energy to cast, two ma uh, uh, five magic to cast, two two magic to flip over for the revive, seven power, two critical, and then he also has the amplify ability that the samurai general has, and he also has this auto ability. When this zombie is summoned, place two cards from the top of your deck into your magic area at rest. Then add one card to your hand from your magic area. So, so essentially, you can take the top two cards of your deck, put them, in, put them straight into your magic area, and then you can pick one of those cards and put it to your hand which gives you a lot of a lot of really cool control and being able to like combo and do some crazy stuff. Next one is a uh, one copy of one with the cherry blossoms, three magic to cast or three magic to summon, flip over one magic to revive, five power, one critical, and then his auto when this zombie is summoned place target green card in your dead area into your magic area at rest. And then we have one copy of the Okonomiyaki flipper, one magic to summon, flip over one magic for the revive, five power, one critical. His auto is if this zombie is summoned, place it automatically in the splattered area. And then for our last undead faction card, we have Mr. Handshaker. One magic to summon, flip over one magic to revive, four power, and one critical damage. Now we go to the red faction, the Immortals. And if you actually look up here, it actually tells you what faction they go to. Well, it's kind of hard to read because the print's small. But the green faction, yeah, they're not they're not undead. They're uh, they're called dead men. They're called the dead men. Yeah. So green faction is dead men. The red faction are immortals. So for our first, we have two copies of Enriel. She costs three magic to summon, flip over two magic to revive, five power, one critical, auto. When this zombie is summoned, inflict five damage to target opponent zombie. So as soon as she comes out, she can go ahead and hit one of your opponent zombies for five damage, which actually can be really good for helping you to clear your opponent's field so you can go in for a real big hit on their life points. So yeah, two copies of Enreal. Next, we have two copies of the Immortal Devotee, Ascetic. Two magic to summon, flip over one magic to revive. Power six and one critical damage to your opponent. No abilities. Next, we have two copies of the Immortal Devotee, Unworthy. One magic to summon, flip over one magic to revive. 5 power, 1 critical, and his auto is when this zombie is summoned, it cannot attack until the end of the turn. So he's got a very delayed attack on him. But that could actually come in, come in handy if you're using some of your bigger zombies to knock out your opponent's field to send it to the splattered area, and then you could use the Immortal Devotee at the end of your turn to you know, occasionally finish finish off what what you started next we have two copies of the deadly miki one magic to summon flip over two magic to revive power two critical one and his auto ability is when this zombie attacks inflict two damage to target opponent zombie so he can actually dish out some uh some <coughs> auto auto damage he, he can he can do some burn damage and that's that's fun. Next, we have the polluting Kawato and only one copy of him. Three magic to summon flip over three magic for the revive. Seven power, one critical, and he has a permanent ability. If the zombie is at rest, opponent zombies cannot attack the player. So as long as he is at rest, your opponent can't attack you. 
your opponent can still attack your your zombies that you have on the field, but they can't hit you directly. And for our last Immortal Faction card, we have the Big Red uh, Immortal Bomb. That's what I like to call this one. Emogen Cole. Emogen Cole, she costs four magic to summon and flip over three magic for the revive. She's real crazy, though, because she has seven power and two critical, and she's got the corrode ability. When this zombie injures an opponent zombie in battle, inflict damage equal to this card's critical to your opponent's life. And then her permanent ability is this zombie gains plus X power, where X is equal to the number of opponent zombies. So that is actually really useful. And then we have a double faction. We have two copies of this double faction. Uh, it is a green and red faction, Dead Man Immortal. And it is Kunoichi the Double Crosser. Four magic to summon, flip over three magic to revive, seven power, one critical. And the uh, Kunoichi the Double Crosser has Amplify. When the zombie inflicts damage to your opponent's life, Flip over the same number of face down magic. Yep, we remember that from a couple of the other ones. And then it also has Emogen Cole's Corrode ability. And it also has an Activate ability, which you can only activate during the main phase, as seen right here. Flip over one red uh, magic card in your magic area to inflict three damage to target zombie. And that's two copies of Kunoichi Double Crosser. And now we are getting into the event cards that we have. So we only have three event cards for this deck, but the first one is Zombie World Order. This can uh, can be played free at any time. Target zombie gains plus three power until the end of turn. And now we have a uh, Immortal event card, Grabbing Hands. Free can be played at any time. Flip over one red magic card to inflict four damage to target zombie. And then our last one is a dead men event card. The zombie fish can only be activated during your main phase. Flip over one green magic card and choose up to one green zombie card with a cost of three or higher from your deck and reveal it, then add it to your hand. Afterwards, shuffle your deck. Well, that is going to wrap it up for this because, yeah, that is all 25. And, yeah, I knew this was going to be a short video going in because not really a whole lot of cards to showcase off. But, like I said, when we get that, uh, when we get that box of Zombie World Order cards, that will be fun to take a look at what we get. And we'll probably add a few extra cards to these small decks. Who knows? We might be able to add enough cards to add 25 more cards and make both decks full decks. But th both decks would run, would be similar, but different at the same time because they would have the same 25 card uh, demo deck, but then they'd also have some other cards mixed in. So who knows? That that could be a lot of fun for, for Baku Kid and I to try and add some more cards to these and make them a little more fun and see what we can do with just the cards that we'll have available because yeah unfortunately this is this is a dead TCG because the same year that this was supposed to get a full release Dragon Ball Super got the release and Bandai launched both games Zombie World Order and Dragon Ball Super I never actually played the Dragon Ball Super game. Uh, I saw the cards, never picked it up, but the the demo decks for Zombie World Order, I picked up years ago for free at my local game shop. And honestly, I'm actually really glad I did at the time because I never took a look. I never actually tried out the, the card game itself until Baku Kid and I watched a tutorial video on YouTube on how to play the game and literally just dove in. 
And yeah, I really like it. I really like this game, and it's very unfortunate that Bandai kind of killed it off. And, but we'll see. We'll see what cards we get because there was only the one small set, the one small launch set that came out that has only 68 cards in the entire set. So we'll see what Baku Kid and I get from that box. But until next time, I am Baku Dad, one half of the Baku Boys, signing off. And always remember to Bakugan Brawl, let it rip, and always stay awesome and nerdy. Peace.